So I've divided this, I've uh, gone through our plant disease diagnostic records, so I'm going to talk about the most common diseases we've seen in the last 10 years at the uh, diagnostic lab. Uh, from cankers and blights, just kind of lumped together, and I also have, um, so we'll go leaf spots, I'll talk about phytophthora root rot, and we have a new disease that I found out about yesterday. So yes, always good news. So let's start with cankers and stem blights. Botrosferia canker, we call bot canker. Phomopsis tip blight can also cause cankers. To some people, they look alike. That's okay. If you see a problem, um, just cut it out and we'll help you diagnose. But Botrosferia canker um, is a canker, meaning it's on the woody tissue. So with blueberries, sometimes it's hard to tell, but there will be swellings. There will kind of be sometimes cracks and openings. It's an abnormality, all right? So cut it out and then have it diagnosed. Uh, bot canker, so this canker is gonna girdle, and I don't know if you can really see kind of the browning here um, as it starts girdling. And as this, pathogen, as this pathogen moves through woody tissue, it kills that tissue and it starts girdling it. So of course you're gonna see, um, uh, 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 um, you're gonna see a reduction of uh, uptake of water and nutrients to tops of plants. So especially during the summer is when you're gonna see a lot of dieback and a lot of uh, branch death. Blight, when we talk about blight sometimes, well, that's when there's a sudden death or when it seems to be a sudden death and the leaves will remain attached. So if it's a really quick death, you'll see the leaves remaining attached to, uh, to tips. And if you cut through it, you'll see that discoloration of woody tissue. If you were to submit that sample to the diagnostic lab, we wouldn't need those dry, crispy leaves that were still attached. We wouldn't need the tip. We're looking for the canker. So sending in an entire cane is helpful. And if you actually do, if you're not real sure, you can cut it into pieces so it fits better in a box or a really large envelope. So I know sometimes these, these canes can get very long, so it's okay to cut it into pieces. All right, so uh, I talked about infection, um, time of infection versus symptom development. Uh, we see usually signs of bot canker uh, late, mid late summer when it's hot and that plant has a, a higher water requirements, but infection is occurring right at the time of leaf out and bloom. So infections occurring in May. So if there is a problem to be able to manage and to watch it during those times of the year. Um, like any of our other plant diseases, the pathogen is more active when there's that free water. So rainy years like this year, of course, we're gonna see a lot more of it. Or actually infection may have occurred this year. You may not see symptoms until next year. Um, so infection, how does infection occur? Well. Those little bitty spores can't really penetrate this bark, this hard woody bark. So how does it get in? Any kind of mechanical wound, any kind of damage, I don't care if it's mower or tractor damage or hail damage, insect damage, bad pruning cuts, all of those, all of those openings, those um, mechanical and natural openings are going to invite that pathogen in. That's how they get in from the start. So again, a really good pruning cut. And of course, with any canker, overwintering is going to occur in the canker. So when I talk about pruning, so we know if we know infections occur in May, you want to make sure your pruning is done and your field is clean before that infection process. So knowing the biology of some of these pathogens will help you get your work done in time. So how do we manage it? Well, we're reducing stress because any kind of natural openings and natural cracks is an invitation um, and an open door for these pathogens. Removing dead, diseased, and dying wood. Disposing of those cuttings, clean cutting right into a cart, getting them out of there. Make really clean cuts, I've said that. And unfortunately, there are no fungicides that are effective, organic or synthetic. There are no effective fungicides there. So a really good, good management practices are critical across the board here. And our second cankering or twig blight disease is a phomopsis twig blight. We see it primarily as a twig blight. It'll start in the blossoms and it'll work its way back. We call it a blight because it dies really quickly. And it seems that just when that need for water and nutrients is the highest, um, during the summer we see a sudden collapse of that tissue. Uh, fruit rots can occur. We don't see that many fruit rots. It's primarily the twig dieback. 
it can cause so twig dieback on the young on the young canes and two or three year old canes and stems that if it, if it hasn't died altogether that's when we'll see a canker develop so um, spore production will begin at bud swell so we'll see spores that's when infection occurs and infection and it can occur through um, through blossoms or through natural openings this pathogen doesn't just sporulate once during the year, it sporulates every time there's a rain event. So a year like this year, there was just constant sporulation events. And unfortunately, we had quite a bit of um, Phomopsis twig blight this year. This one is another stress pathogen. It's, uh, it's opportunistic. It loves stress plants. So a good healthy plant, you're really not going to see it on it. But pH deficiencies are usually the first thing that we, we tend to see it on, or the, our Phytophthora root rot um, survivors, if you will, those that are struggling along. We see a lot of the secondary disease. They do produce cankers. I said that if the, if the entire twig doesn't die, a canker will form. That's the overwintering site, so pruning those out, really important. Uh, susceptible and tolerant cultivars are printed in ID 210, the Midwest uh, Blueberry Production Guide also. <clears throat> so how do you manage it? Avoiding stress, that includes drought stress, that includes pH stress, nutritional deficiencies, uh, weed, weed um, competition, removing dead, dying, or diseased wood, disposing of cuttings. You see the pattern here, right? Uh, fungicides, if you're going to use fungicides April through July, the rainier it is, the later you're going to use them. You can use them only once. Those of you who want a lower input system, but, not, but you're willing to spray. So to spray right at flowering and right after flowering. Lime sulfur, which is organically certified, uh, can be applied at dormancy if this is a problem. So it will really suppress some of that overwintering, um, those overwintering structures. <clears throat> 